I'm like one of those cockatoos right now. I can't <laughs> so <it's> awesome. <laughs> oh, would you send it to me? Hello and welcome to the Quackcast, the Drunk Duck Quackcast. I'm Ozan Ocean and with me is Baines, Pitt and Tarns. Hi guys. Hello. So this week we're talking about make fixing art. Fixing it. Um, it's basically a, a bit of a trend at the moment. You know, you see a bit of sexy artwork and you go, oh my god, that's that's not how real people are. I've got to fix this and make it unsexy and un, and then make myself a hero by doing the proper unsexy version and showing you how it should be. So that's uh that's that's just... there's there's not gonna be any back and forth debate on this cast, just so everybody knows we're all on the same page. It's gonna yeah. be an echo chamber in here, so I'll have to be the <laughs> and I'll have to I'll have to take on the mantle of the Puritan. That's uh that'll be my job. No, please don't do that. It's like such a dissonant image. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. Um, so yeah, there's that. But first, we've got to get into the featured comic. Uh, Quite Gaxe has uh, given us a feature this week, and it is Designosaurus. So take it away, Quiet with Designosaurus. Hello, this is Quite Gaxe, and the feature I've selected for this week is the Designosaurus by Joe Travers. And it is rated E for everyone. Accompany Zor and Des on a typical office workday filled with office antics, including a drafting table and a handful of color swatches. Life is business as usual until Roz, Zor's taller brother, comes to visit the office in order to eat all the cake and attract all the attention from the office secretary. This comic spans two decades from the early 2000s until the present day, of plastic face shields and remote control security drones. The comic is drawn in a full color comic strip format. It is also written in multiple languages from English to Russian to elite speak. Join the team of dinosaurs who moonlight as designers and read The Designosaurs by Joe Travers rated E. And that was quite a Gakse with Designosaurus. Which is, uh, if you look at that title, it's really an uh, unusual title to say, but um, I managed to say it without a problem because I'm a genius. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I, I thank you for your claps, but I deserve them. So. <laughs> he practiced for three days before this cast. <laughs> <laughs> I had to have, yeah, tr- strict voice training. Um, so after that, we have a featured co- uh, featured music. Gamalus has given us a theme uh, music this week. Um, and this week I'm remembering to actually read it. And um, this week it's, it's a comic that I don't think any of you guys know. It's a really obscure, unusual one. It's only like, a, like I don't know, maybe 14 pages or so. It's um, not many pages. So it takes the, the artist a while to create them and they create this really long, long kind of page. It's really, it's really, it's really <gasps> cool. <laughs> and, <yeah. laughs> it's the theme to... Thank you! Inhabitants. <laughs> Yay! If you would have said something else, I would have flown over there and punched you in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> uh, so I would describe this music as serenity and orange calm, suddenly shot through with the energy of a tribal beat and a burping growling rhythm coming together suddenly with a crescendo blast and once more the calm returns so take it away gum wallace with inhabitants
And that was the theme tune to Inhabitants, which is a comic by our very own... Me! Face. <laughs> Yay! And it's, yeah, Inhabitants is a fantastic comic, and it's rated T by Pitface. So read it. How did I read it? I did read it T, yeah. Yeah, you did. Well, that's that's what it should be, yep. Ready. If it changes, I'll change it. Yeah. T, and it's looking cool. I noticed a helmet's got a bit of a mullet. I didn't notice that before. Uh, the latest page, you can mm-hmm. see Oh, it. I thought you noticed it before. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a, a little bit of a ch- shitty mullet situation <laughs> going on. Helmet. <laughs> I, I think that's what um, Gordon Wallace actually named the song in the file. Uh, helmet's shitty mullet. Mullet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, yeah, it's it's a very good song, very fitting for the uh, comic, and uh, it's a, it's a pretty cool comic. Thank you. I do agree. <laughs> well, let's get on with this quest qu- about uh, sexy characters being made unsexy because that's what you should do isn't it i like the picture that you chose for your cover image tance with the um mm-hmm. this character from a uh, manga uh who's very busty and um yes. like so the uh and the writing over at the top says stop sexualizing women and the <laughs> the fixed version of her has um very wide hips and a small tiny chest and um hairy arms and hairy legs and for yeah. a start there and, the, and the darker skin basically yes and, and for a start there part of the issue is the idea of sexualizing women because the word is being used wrongly and it's being used wrongly by everybody because adults Adult men and women are sexual. You cannot sexualize them. That's not what the word means. You sexualize unsexy, unsexual things. Like if you were to make a, a, a sexual version of a child who is not pubescent, that would be sexualizing. If you were to do it to an inanimate object, that would be sexualizing this thing. But you cannot do that to an adult person. Sexualizing adults is an impossibility. So. I don't agree with that so much. I think there are ways to sexual. I, I mean, because the default of a person isn't sex. No, like, no. What I mean is um, sexual traits. An adult person is sexual in that it's not like, oh, I'm sexual. Sexual means basically we have genitalia and we have. Um, secondary and primary sexual traits that's all it means so you sexualizing means adding those traits to a person so that's what it means it doesn't mean what we tend to what people imply by the use of it is making it erotic or eroticizing well okay so I think there are degrees to that though Um, because all right so the way that we use it in our day-to-day speech though um that can be done in degrees, right? So, like, you can have... So, okay, so say you take a figure and um, it's got boobies and a butt, whatever. Yeah. Um, if you make those particular characteristics um, at, as the focal point of the character it becomes more sexualized because the focal point of those, yes, exactly, by the way of your definition, because things are sexualized when they have those traits, but it doesn't have to be black and white. Do you see what I'm saying? There can be degrees of it. That's what it is. Because those traits, just the existence of them makes them sexual. You can't, if the traits don't exist, like an adult human being is sexual, you cannot if you're going to sexualize something then you are adding those traits making them bigger or smaller doesn't make them more sexual they could be uh, it does in art because it's about the focal point when you're talking about art no because then it becomes erotic or sexy 
It's just I a misuse. Why are you making such black and white distinctions between these two words? Because the term is being misused. It's not meant to be used in that way. It's it's become by who? Why isn't it meant to be used that way? No, can't no, it be used that way? Right because now. it it's it does not mean that. It's like the term like initialism and uh, acronym. People get them confused. Like. Um, most words people think of as being acronyms are not acronyms because acronym actually means a word that um, a word made out of initials that becomes a name or becomes a, a, an artificial word like laser. And, uh, and laser. Okay, well, because we might spend too much time on definitions, and that's I don't think that will that will rob us of the substance of what we're saying. <laughs> Let's just agree to say that. Uh, adult individuals do have a sexual element to them because they are sexually, physically sexually mature. However, if they are drawn in a way that draws extra attention in a sexually um, suggestive manner uh, to their assets, then that is over sexual hypersexualization or erotic if you like or sexualization of an adult character because they they go a step further than just the drawing mature uh, primary and secondary organs like uh, se well, sexual organs I'll continue okay. to say it's eroticization I'll say because okay fine is... but but uh, the thing is that there is absolutely and we shouldn't ignore that uh, yeah, the, the the image I put on the cover has a, a young lady with like F G cups or something like that. Like, that you can balance coke, coke cans or those cans. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the that's not the point. The point is that the artist wanted to draw her that way, and that might be, and it's very likely that he or she intended to draw her with huge bazoongas because that's a fantasy that makes it interesting, attractive, or fun. And that's fine. That's fine. The, the, the problem is that you don't get to go and draw over that character to make them uh, prepubescent, for example, or to make them less sexy. To protect who? Protect the children. Protect who? To do that. So that's the idea that I was positing anyway in, in the whole don't fix art. So why art are people should not be... doing this whole art fixing stuff? Hmm? Why are people doing the art fixing? Do you want my personal opinion or what they are saying they are doing it for? Well, both. They are saying they are fixing it. They are saying that they are making it more morally correct or more anatomically correct, depending on who is fixing what, or more diverse or less diverse or more body positive or, you know, you name it, slap on a, a more blank label and the fixer will say that this is why they are doing it. Um, but in my opinion, they do it because usually that is the way for them to get attention. And by drawing over something that is already very, like it has a standard of art that they find good enough, I suppose, or attractive enough or popular enough, they are drawing attention to themselves as well. And they basically poach the art piece, in my opinion. Um, so that's why they're doing it. For me, uh, it would take a lot to convince me that they're doing it for any other purpose. I find the Mary Jane really creepy the more you look at it. What do you guys think of it? The Which fixed one? Version. The left or the right? <laughs> uh, the, the fixed one. She's going to topple any minute now. That's why it's creepy. Yeah, her knees are off the edge of the couch. You can't sit like that and not expect to fall over with your hot coffee. Mm -hmm. 
She is an action driver. Waiting to happen. <laughs> it just seems. Also, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, precarious. I I mean, it does look kind of creepy, but I just more kind of I just find it boring. Mm. Um, because I don't get anything extra out of it other than an exercise and this is what this character would look like differently in this style like it doesn't give me anything and like to be clear and I said this in um, the recorded version too but I want to say it here too I've got nothing against um, reimagining and redrawing characters uh, just to think you know like oh what would this person look like like this whatever if if it's coming from a place of you know i i love this franchise i like thinking about it in different ways or i'm just mm -hmm. curious about it what i don't like and what we're pretty much all in agreement on i think is um when you come at it in the, from this angle of this is wrong this is problematic and i'm going to fix it um, because uh, I have the moral high ground. It's yeah. again, it's virtue signaling, is yeah. pretty much what it is, and it's fucking annoying and it's not interesting. Exactly. Like for yeah. I, I, I want to give an example uh, to illustrate exactly what you said. Um, if you go on Twitter or not Twitter, there are a lot of people that make versions. So there is a whole series of uh, Disney princesses all rotund. Uh, all they are, you know, they are all heavy. They are drawn to be heavy Disney princesses. But the artists that do it don't say that they are fixing the original design of the princesses. It's just another version. Just uh, like you have the zombie princesses or you have like a uh, the modern high school princesses, and so on and so forth. Even the, the people that actually try to dress them in historically accurate dresses don't say that they are fixing it. They are saying this is the historical version of this character. Mm -hmm. And that's fun, in my opinion. Like I, I like them, all of those. They don't make me rage uh, that on a... Uh, on the DD yeah, blog. <laughs> it's the moralizing that, uh, you know, there's time, as Pitt says, like the, the virtual signaling that, that's repellent about it. It's the attitude that comes yeah. with it. It's not the art itself. I mean, it was wrong when it was going the other way too. Like, Oz, you brought up earlier, um, I think after we'd stopped recording, the example of Pink Diamond from Steven Universe and when people would draw her like slim and sexy and stuff. I mean, as a way of of fixing the character, I guess. I don't know. Is that what they were doing? I don't know. It's just kind of, it just doesn't feel right, you know? I don't know. I, I remember one person had done a sexy, slim version of Pink mm. Diamond just as a, a fun project that this girl did it. Oh. And then she was bullied by a lot of people saying oh you can't do that oh. you made mm -hmm. it yeah. normal if it's just for fun then it's fine it's yeah, yeah. and um, there's also like that same thing that has happened with uh, uh, other people trying different for example different skin tones um so you get either one side or the other side i'm not going to name who is who I say, how dare you whitewash? How dare you blackwash? How dare you greenwash? I don't know. Uh, so the 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 is there is a, this brigade, this art brigade that comes to judge your versions and fix them uh, because because uh, usually the people that complain also slap on the fixed version like this is the right skin tone or this is the right set of hair or this is the like the, like you know draw your own stuff you know leave the person alone i especially remember there was this uh, other huge uh, twitter drama thing uh, about sira uh, uh -huh. the new version the old version in that there was this young girl, and when I say young girl, like around 11, 12, some, somewhere out there, and see the poor girl, uh, she posted 
uh, scans of her renditions of the original Sira characters, like the the one that is like a mermaid. I don't remember her now. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting an, to be an old lady, and I don't remember things. <laughs> so anyway, she she drew them. She drew a couple as they were like the original design. And the original design is mostly white, whereas the newer design is more diverse, uh, both in body shape and in uh, race. And uh, you could see that she she was a young girl because her drawings has had that feel of a young person doubling in uh, in art for the first time, like with those blocks of uh, those art uh, books. Uh, that they used to illustrate in anyway, and she was bullied out of Twitter for daring to draw the, the particular characters uh, white because the the second version they were uh, like a darker skin and uh, they absolutely uh, called her all types of na- names, uh, defaced her art, and I I'm saying defaced because that's exactly what they did. And the girl quit her account uh, and deleted everything. So, yeah, that was not cool. Uh, and that's exactly what art fixers do. Yeah. Mm, well, that's pretty, um, pretty nasty. Well, to, to harass an artist that way, to destroy an artist. So that's one aspect of it, though. And then there's the uh, these other ones that sort of virtual signal and by doing their version it's you know they they take someone's art that's more famous and then they you know they um like the text underneath this picture that you've got here the, mm-hmm. the person says i made an attempt at fixing this because it was so bad lol it's not perfect <laughs> no. but it's better than it was so that's all that matters lol just don't look at it too closely it's fine and uh, may as well tag fixing bad comic art since their blog is mainly what inspired me. So this is whole common, this is whole kind of like uh, suggestion that the original art is bad, like it's bad comic mm-hmm. art. It's, everything about it is bad, which yeah. is um, and insufferable. Yeah, which is um, you know. It's a bit of a superiority complex too, because oh my my fixing of it like repairs it. I'm I can judge what's bad, and not really though because she she or he I don't know their gender. Um, they they are saying like that just don't look at it too closely. Like if it's so much better, why not? Oh, but that that's uh, always a false modesty that artists have. They go, yeah, but if it does have any errors, you know, it's not perfect, but you know, you know, that's that way of saving your own ego, saying, like, I know it's not perfect. We all do that as artists. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's about our own art. We we can hate our own art. <laughs> <laughs> that's different. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and if you see the the fix, um. She is not anatomically, anatomically correct, and she is off balance. And also, even if she were, if she were balanced, that's a very uncomfortable position to mm-hmm. sit in. Uh, so the thing is, with the gesture too, the gesture is different because it mm-hmm. loses. So in the first one, like, yeah, there's shit that could be done much better. That's I don't even think that's up for debate, but. Mm-hmm. There, it, it conveys this sense of tension. Um, mm-hmm. And the second one, I don't really get that. No. The gesture is lost. Yeah. And and if you see, if you notice, like, uh, see, uh, the, the, the fix has, like, lowered her leg that was basically stopping her from toppling over. Mm-hmm. And it is, I guess it is tucked under under here, together yeah. with the other one, but she hasn't, and the fix hasn't fixed, the fix hasn't fixed <laughs> uh, the the right leg. That, that should be tucked a little further inside for 
for Mary Jane to be at least somewhat comfortable and better balanced. And yeah, it is, and of course there are, there are problems with her forearms and and everything. But uh, but that's not the issue. Even if it was the perfect, most anatomically sound and beautiful and relaxed version, it still would be an obnoxious defacement of the original art, in my opinion. Like they, you, they, they would have no business doing that. Just draw your own thing from scratch, if you like. Yeah, and you know what? I, I do understand where the sentiment comes from, from a degree mm -hmm. of, you know, comic book artists uh, are always drawing tits like that, for example, where the shirt mm -hmm. is like, uh, mm -hmm. like they are in the first one where it's like the, the fabric doesn't lay how it does. It, it yeah. always contorts. So it's always rounding them more or like stuff like that. And that is, it becomes annoying after you see it for so long. Um, so I do understand where this sentiment is coming from, from a, for a degree, I do. But again, like you were saying, um, I don't know, make your own things. Or that the internet is such a huge platform. Make your own things. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be more impactful if you do. Yeah. Like I said, <laughs> this isn't interesting. Exactly, exactly. Uh, there were, like, this uh, particular piece has... Uh, taken a lot of flack and a lot of criticism and I was a part of that like when I saw it I, I chatted a little bit and I said you know that's that's not the that's that's an awkward pose and you know who pushes up their boobs like that you know with their upper arms and stuff but um, that aside I don't know MJ may have a kink or something I, I, <laughs> How should I know? Uh, but uh, yeah, there were other people that redrew the entire thing and placed the uh, Hawkeye in that position instead, oh, which was uh, yes. which was super funny and not a fix. Clearly, it was just uh, poking fun at the particular uh, pose that the artist chose, and I find that very legit. So, yeah. Yeah. And isn't the Hawkeye reference a reference to a similar story from a couple of years ago? I think that was so. Hawkeye related. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I think so. Yeah. I think I think they whenever they want to show that the the pose is ridiculous, they make poor Hawkeye. Get the Hawkeye. Colin <laughs> <laughs> Hawkeye. See, that's funny. That's <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But there were also other because and then I, because I was uh, like rage following this entire thing when I came across it on Twitter, there were other women that posted selfies of them in that position mm -hmm. and it looked comfortable for them. Actually, it actually did look comfortable for them. It's just uh, perhaps the style or how he has uh, chosen to, to draw her. I don't know. I, I don't know why it looks so silly, but... I do. Yeah, I can yeah, point I out a few reasons, it. but from my yeah. point of view, it looks like someone yeah. has just drawn a, a, a figure out of their head without reference to a real person. So it looks a bit flat and awkward because it's like it's it's yeah. flat on when there should be more foreshortening in in mm. the the image, and that's why it sort of comes across as pretty awkward. Yeah. Like if but, yeah. you had drawn a photo of one of those real women posing, then it wouldn't be. Probably. She's like got her like coffee cup sitting like almost. She's like straining to have her coffee cup sitting like in her crotch and stuff. Yeah. And, like like breaking her hips so she can do it, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. She she's and uh, and that is a very steaming hot coffee cup. Like her hands must be impervious to heat by that time. But anyway, that's another thing. <laughs> for, uh, for the way I look at it, it is just an artist's sketch. You know, they're just doing it from their head and they did a picture of a sexy woman from their head and that's mm -hmm. it looks pretty decent. Even though it's it's awkward, it's it still expresses what it's meant to express. It's like Rob Leefield art. His art, you know, he does his characters with their tiny feet and the ten thousand teeth and fifteen thousand pouches <laughs> and a gigantic gun. 
but it's not meant to be like a direct um, uh, version of reality. This is meant mm-hmm. to express like um, like emotional ferocity, and it it works in that way, even though it you know it doesn't. Yeah, exactly, and that's a, another thing. Like the artist uh, responded after. Because that thing went viral, the fix, and uh, when it went viral, he responded because he was pissed that he was seeing the fix in front of him all the time. People were tagging him all the time, which is uh, an extra harassment. Like, why would you do that? To yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, and so if he, you're doing that, it shows that you're not all that familiar with comic art because there's so yeah. much bad fucking comic art out there. Why just pick on? probably feel like there's tons of shitty comic book art out there i've made half of it um <laughs> <laughs> but see I, this is kind of highlighting for me that there there there's a definite there's a difference between critique and doing this isn't there because yeah. critique is okay but this is this is with critique there's it it's all in your what's the word it, it's all intent yes it's all in mm-hmm. your intent isn't it because with critique you're focusing on that piece yet you're trying to make it better but it's still the artist's piece you know it's yeah. the artist's piece mm-hmm. and, when you and do this you have to to do it. yeah yeah it's you take the piece out of the artist's hand and um it just doesn't feel right does it no and now that you said that, it reminds me of a, of a personal story, a relatively personal. So my, uh, my father actually painted uh, as a hobby. So he painted uh, with oils on canvas. And usually what he would do uh, is uh, landscapes and still art and things like that. And um, he always drew with references and... And at some point, because he got a lot of good uh, feedback, he took a painting of his to another painter that was relatively, relatively uh, well known in Greece. And he said, you know what, I would like you to critique this. And the guy returned the painting painted over with all the corrections. Oh, no. And he had even had even drawn some uh, chickens at some point in the in the <laughs> landscape, oh, God. and oh. it was the worst thing. It was terrible to see, first of all. But even if it wasn't, it it felt like a bit of um, of a violation, I would say. Yeah. So kick in the guts. Uh, yeah, oh, and he no. said I fixed it. For him, actually, now that I remember, he said I fix. I I did all the fixes that he needed. Now it's good. <laughs> now you can just sign your own fucking name at the bottom. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a dickhead. I know. Yeah. I mean, think about it like, not that there needs to be another example that's a pretty relatable example, I think, but like, you know, um, a lot of people listening, since, I mean, I imagine they're from our community and stuff, there's mm-hmm. going to be a decent number of number of people that have gone through like art school or even just taking art classes and stuff that involve critique and imagine like um so all right so imagine like the the regular kind of setup you know um you finish a project a class finish, finishes a project you set up your chairs whatever and you have critiques right the class kind of goes around and the teacher gives critiques and stuff like that um now imagine instead of giving you a critique, the teacher took your your artwork overnight, um, made a slide, or or even just on the artwork itself, uh, just put in automatically what they think they would do or what should be better, and just made the changes themselves, and then gave it back. That would defeat any kind of teaching experience. Exactly. So, I mean, if you're trying to teach somebody or some, you know, that that's not the way you do it, I guess the people who fix aren't, art aren't so much trying to, they're definitely not trying to teach the artist something. Um, mm-hmm. That's not how you, how you would do it. 
Exactly. Exactly. There's now there is this um, lady that I tutor for creative writing. She has she has been world building for her fantasy series. She's a she's a, a new author, but she has some extremely uh, fascinating ideas about her world building. Uh, she that I have never seen elsewhere. They are very original. They they are. Uh, it makes me sometimes want to eat and and try them myself mm. because they are so nice. And uh, what I'm teaching here is basically how to organize everything to feel organic in the world and to feel um, not realistic but uh, real enough to suspend disbelief. You know all that sort of things. And what she would tell me was that she had gone to different authors and they kept writing in her text and then she showed me all the red stuff that they have superimposed on her text and not only on her text as in like the, the chapters but in her world building telling her you cannot do magic this way you have to do it this way you cannot do uh, uh, people like this you have to do them like this why why do you have fantastical animals but you also have cats it's like and i told her because you want to <laughs> that's we don't judge that we just build it to make sense to an audience so that they can immerse themselves in your world but this is your world and it took her a month to start feeling assertive again that her ideas had merit and, and because she kept asking me like could you please form this world for me and I said no I'm not going to do that you're going to do that I'm just going yeah. to ask questions and you're going to answer them not the other way around <laughs> um, yeah. and, and, and it broke my heart to, to be honest and I'm, I'm saying all of these things because she doesn't speak English and she will never listen to this but it broke and my then heart. Takes one of your English courses. Yes, but it would be a long time before she can listen to this and uh, discover it. Uh, but um, uh, it, it really broke my heart for her, and it uh, enraged me. And then I came across the MJ thing, and then it, that was it. I said, "I'm going to talk about fixing up." <laughs> so yeah. Oh. Yeah, it, it kills creativity if you fix other people's art. It does. So it does, and and it is. It is all back to the intent again. If it's done from a different place of like, oh, out of curiosity, like what if this person was Polynesian instead of mm -hmm. from Florida or something like that? You know, like yeah. that can be an interesting thought exercise. You know, um, and and yeah, I, I'm just yeah, yeah. It's intense it's, grandstanding. Yeah, it, and, it, and it, it is the intent, and it is the entitlement. I think that goes with it uh, to a very big extent. Uh, now, I don't know. Fortunately, I haven't had my art fixed by anyone, uh, which is fortunate. Uh, Not possibly we've before, seen anyway. What? Not that, we've, not seen. that we've seen. Yes, <laughs> at least I, I have not been informed of it. <laughs> um, Please care that much about what I do. Please try to fix my things. No, no I'm not that don't. desperate. I mean, no, I wouldn't. Please don't. Don't wouldn't care about my doing stuff. that to my own art. You know, just as a fun experiment. Like if you wanted to, if I felt like going through and saying, okay, I'm going to do a non-sexy version of all the the bottomless waitress characters, or you know, more more realistic version or for pinky or something like that i'm gonna do a um a completely non-sexy and that would be just a bit of like a fun project for myself but for someone else to do mm -hmm. that and impose their ideas then that would be um yeah. quite awful for them to say i'm gonna fix imagine, your character. imagine that you know you have that uh, very nice uh, pin-up piece where they are all in profile and they 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 have different shaped uh, boobs and bottoms and 
<laughs> and someone returns this piece to you with uh, skirts on. And uh, <laughs> they're fixed. Now. <laughs> yes. They're fixed. <laughs> they're all wearing full lengths. They're wearing ankle length skirts <laughs> and wimples. Yeah. Habits. Nuns have it. They're, they're, they're fixed now. That's, that's and, and and that that also is a, again in the style of the art. The artist, if they choose to do something, they choose it for a specific purpose. Like for example, you are doing a fun uh, tongue-in-cheek, uh, light-hearted comic with a bottomless waiter <laughs> waiters and and, and, and they're. Oh, I'll read that. Yeah, and, and uh, they have, there is, I, I really like it, and I, like, you walk a very fine line that somehow you both strike perfectly uh, between uh, tasteful and, uh, and non-tasteful. Uh, so, it's, it's really cool to watch. I don't think I would ever be able to do it. And uh, I would uh, really be angry if anyone fixed your art. Uh, okay, granted, I'd be angry even if I didn't agree. Uh, but uh, what I'm saying is that I can tell the style and what you guys are going for. Uh, just like in, they would not fit in without Moonlight, for example. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't be able to have character designs like this. And um, <laughs> even my sexy lady is not super flamboyant. I mean, she's flamboyant, but she's flamboyant within the context and the style of the particular mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but if I were to transport all these people in your style, they would have different character designs, is what I'm saying. And that's why you don't get to fix an artist's chosen character design, because they, are, they design the characters to fit in a particular framework of, a, of an art piece or comic or painting or, you know, what have you. So mm, exactly. I hope I'm making sense and I'm not rambling. No, yeah, you're making perfect sense. It does not work for, um, for everything. Yeah, if you change the context, mm -hmm. you, you destroy it. It's exactly. Very important to remember. I haven't come across this whole idea of, um, you know, that I can remember of uh, fixing characters to make them uh, less sexy. I haven't really. Oh, except for the um, the Melo Minara um, Spider Woman, mm. people did sort of fix that. <laughs> that was a big thing back when that happened years and years ago. Okay. That was funny as well. <laughs> I don't know. Well, when I see those kind of contortionist sexy poses, I it gets a chuckle out of me. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah. movie product productions when they're ad adapting something, they do change things sometimes. Um, I'm trying to think of cases where a character has been made less sexy. I guess it doesn't necessarily even just have to be less sexy, right? It could just be... Maybe that opens it up too much. Well, so. I don't know. Okay, look at Lara Croft, I think, one. Lara oh. Croft, uh, the, like the, the latest movie of Lara Croft, yes. supposedly is uh, fixed, quote-unquote, because she was marketed as more, like, less uh, sexualized. At least the, the way that the, I was informed of it is like, here is the less sexualized version of Lara Croft. And, and basically, I, I don't think she is. I think she's still just as sexy. But yeah. Well, look at uh, uh, yeah, um, Judge Dredd. They did the Keith Urban version. I think that's the cat. Well, someone Urban. Yeah, uh, it was uh, Carl Urban. Carl Urban, that's it. So they, they did, they made him more realistic. And that took away the sexiness of the uh, the comic book version of uh, Judge Dredd, who has that amazing physique and outfit, and they made him like a, a real policeman would look, you know, in riot gear. 
So yeah, it's a film. I have to say, I, I beg to differ on that because I still find him super sexy. That's how my first fan out of Judge Dredd was after watching that movie. <laughs> I don't know. I, I find the um the the proper dread outfit like just beautiful super sexy yeah. it is beautiful it's an amazing design yeah they did change a bit about it um and uh, the only time i really see it uh sexualized at all if i would even say that um is in the beginning where you get just that that really quick clip where he puts the jacket on over his naked back um <laughs> That's pretty hot, but um, yeah, it's it's. I would say it's far less flashy. It's far less colorful. You don't have the gold, the huge golden uh, pauldrons, and you don't have the the green gloves and boots and the um, skin tight yeah. black outfit. Yeah. Yeah, with the and then the with the the helmet with the well, no, he still got red on his helmet. The helmet is I can't remember it very well now. It's it was a still simplified I, helmet. It's not as uh, flashy. That's right. As this original. Okay. Well, yeah. It, it, for me, it looked more or less the same, like the the helmet. I mean, not the rest of the outfit. But the but helmet see, again, was pretty iconic. Yeah. So. Um, so okay. So this is a really good example of intent so take for example the earlier judge dread movie where until he took his helmet off the costume was far more accurate to the um comic book costume however um pretty much always the original the the first movie gets a lot more flack um than the carl urban movie and it's because in the first one, um, when he takes off the helmet, it feels like that's a correction thing. You know what I mean? It's almost like a fix-it thing. Like, we have to see his face. Mm -hmm. um, oh. And fans don't like that. Whereas in the Carl Urban one, um, yeah, the silhouette doesn't look as dreadish, especially with Carl Urban's lack of giant chin. But <laughs> the the soul of dread is there he made a great judge dread nonetheless because he was being that character and i, I mean i'm gonna i i do like what um sylvester stallone did i i not that they made him take off the helmet i don't think that was his choice um but i do like how he played that character the, there are two very different ways of playing the same character, but they both work because there have been more campy iterations of Judge Dredd, and there have been more serious ones. And those two movies are two sides of the same coin. But again, it comes back to intent, because the second the Sylvester Stallone Dredd took off that helmet, people got pissed because it was a fix that didn't need to be made. Well, the Carl Urban one the soul of dread was still intact mm -hmm. in a sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, Even yeah. though it looked different. Yeah. yeah. It didn't look different enough to feel like it was fixing anything. Uh, on the contrary, actually, like the, the entire um, feel of the, like the atmosphere was the same. It, it was a bit like, a, not a grittier thing. It was like, um, we're going to focus on the nasty elements. I would say it's far grittier. It's definitely grittier. Yeah, but uh, not in the sense of the gritty reboot, in the sense that we are focusing on the gritty aspects, on the serious aspects. Whereas Stallone was um, focusing more on that this is a comic book movie, more or less. On the like campier felt, aspects. Yeah, it, it felt less... Um, not that you didn't take it seriously, you weren't actually as afraid for the characters as you were in the other one. Um, that's the main difference that I can immediately think of in the sense that uh, you knew that they were all going to be okay, basically, except the for the 
judge that walked, he was going to die. <laughs> well, so what you're basically saying. Now. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was Max. Um, uh, he pops up in so many things or mm -hmm. that you're not expecting. Um, but uh, yeah, so you're so what you're trying to say, right, is that those costume decisions reflected the world that he was in, the atmosphere. Yeah, totally, 100%. Mm -hmm. The intent, though, um, I think, again, comes back to when they took the helmet off, and that's such a simple yeah. thing. But as a member of this fan base, like, I've seen so many people complain about that exact thing, and they will trash the whole fucking movie because he took the helmet off. Can that be a little extreme? Yeah. And if you're in, into Judge Dredd because you're not so much a fan of the campy parts, then um, then yeah, you're not going to like the movie. But I think for the most part, fans tend to take the camping. They, they tend to love it because of its campiness as well. But um, yeah, just those little fixes. Um, really kick people, really step on people's yeah. toes sometimes. Whoa. Yeah, and, and uh, sometimes the the fandoms clash, uh, like we did talk off camera, off the air, about uh, the, pre the, the original Sira crew and the new Sira. Um, the biggest issue that pitted the one side of the fandom against the other wasn't actually the redesigns. It was the marketing of the designs. Because the marketing from the get-go was that this is our fix. We are fixing this uh, uh, problematic um, male gaze pleasing uh, super white uh, whatever <laughs> cartoon that was very simplistic and had nothing to offer and now we are making it worthwhile so there was no way that fans of Sira would uh, jump on board of that um, at all and they didn't so the, when the actual designs dropped uh, they tore them apart they yeah. were not there to actually see different versions. They were there to basically attack, actually counter-attack, in the sense that you attacked my childhood, um, uh, childhood uh, cartoon characters that I grew up with and helped me. For the, There were a lot of people that were saying, how dare you, because uh, Shira helped me um, become who I am or come to terms with my, for example, my LGBTQ uh, nature and stuff like that, because they were saying that it was uh, erasing uh, gay people and women. And the ironic thing was that, um, I think it was filmation, but uh, the, the, the production company that made this was full of gay people and women that uh, fought very hard to make the, the cartoon the way it was. So, yeah, th there was there was a lot of back and forth like this, and what could have been an interesting version, an interesting new style, for example, or whatever, uh, was completely uh, wasted on at least half, if not more, of the fan base. Um, because that is a shame because it is a worthwhile show in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Like, like I said before, um, I, I feel like I'm almost like part of the control group because mm -hmm. I I really don't go on Twitter and stuff like that. So I really wasn't seeing that back and forth the way you guys were. I just kind of went into it for the most part blind, and um, it's it's a pretty decent show. Uh, I think they did a lot of really good things and uh, it mm -hmm. did get a following um, after that, but it could have been much better if it wasn't marketed the way that it was, like you said. Yeah. Um, 
There's no yeah, it had it had it all. Like we desexualized Syrah, we made her more modest, we uh, did it the right way with everybody else, we made the more diverse. I mean, they they checked all the boxes of fixing stuff. So uh, and and uh, yeah, you are the control group. I um the group that got pissed off. <laughs> um. I'm the group that got pissed off because um, I hate when people say I'm fixing something, especially something that was so popular that you are basing your new cartoon on that franchise. Uh, and that's how you get your story greenlit because it is going to carry that name. That's how popular it was. So you cannot really say that there was nothing there. Even if you don't appreciate what there was there, it was something that appealed to a lot of people. So you don't get to negate so many people that liked it that way and tell them that you liked something that was trust. That's another thing that I don't like. Uh, yeah, it's similar. I to liked the, something, and I'm told. Yeah, it's similar to the attitude of those of this uh, Mary Jane art person. Like I fixed mm -hmm. the bad thing. Whereas, but the the creators of the cartoon, the the new version of Shira, weren't like that. It was just the um, the p promoters and all that kind of thing. So we're, we're making it distinct from that. We're not trashing the cartoon itself. We're trashing the um. No, it's it's how it was presented. That's promoters. what I'm focusing on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so they they're more like that that, that virtue virtue signaling, Mary Jane mm -hmm. mutilator, <laughs> mutilator, <laughs> and that other character yeah. with the big boobs. I think I know the anime or manga that character's from too. The um, oh really? Yeah, I recognise it. I haven't watched it for a while. I haven't been watching anime, but yeah, it's um, there's a specific reason that the character looks like that. So it wouldn't make no. sense for her to be, you know, in that uh, uh, unsexy version because that's not what she's meant to represent. So, um, yeah, like Pitt says, you, you're messing up the context and making it a nonsense once you um, change it that way. So Yeah. However, the, another point just uh, that I would like to make is that even if the art is bad in the sense that, for example, uh, there was a comment in the, in the, like under the article that I wrote uh, mentioning cuties, which is the reason that I don't have Netflix anymore. <laughs> um, and the, the cuties is the, this French film that uh, basically has over-sexualized kids in it. Uh, Prepubescent girls that twerk and, and do things that adult women should do. Let's put it that way. Um, so that for me is super offensive. And also I think that it is, it is or should be legal because you are exploiting children, basically. They, you have children do uh, acts that are not for their age. Uh, that said, I would not go back to fix the particular movie. And I would not want anyone to fix it. I would want someone to make it illegal for very specific reasons and then keep it there as an example of what constitutes child uh, an attempt to, to normalize child pornography, basically. Uh -huh. uh, at yeah. least that's what it means like to me, the way that I, that I see it. So. Yeah, that's um, that's something that shouldn't have been done. <laughs> <laughs> but again, fixing that would be wrong. Because it was the artist's, and she said that this is my artistic expression. Okay, uh, I would uh, make sure that nobody fixes it so that we remember what your ex artistic expression is. <laughs> um, so, yeah. 
Well, you know, this has been done in history very um, notably with the, uh, the about the time of the Renaissance. Uh, classical statues from classical Rome and Greece were being, you know, dug up and um, <laughs> displayed and everyone was being inspired by this art style and new and the church was going, oh, well, you can't have great big... Um, uh, genitals on these characters so they had to be um, well they're not big genitals fit they, them. <laughs> yeah, they had to be fig leaved and um yeah. that was a case of exactly the same thing as happening now they they were fixed and we and that has become a meme you know of um the statue with the fig leaf or the person with the fig leaf whereas Mm -hmm. um, that didn't exist in, in ancient art, you know, characters with their genitalia being covered up with leaves, that wasn't a thing that happened, you know, in the mm -hmm. Renaissance so um, it can be quite harmful when that's done but, and, and, and paintings being painted over to put fig leaves over genitalia you know, that was um, a kind of vandalisation that happened in the what was it, 1500s, 1400s? 1400s, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so. I don't remember exactly. So, yeah. There you go. It, it there, yeah. happens. Well, I think we should wrap this up now and put a fig leaf on it and. <laughs> <laughs> In post. <laughs> exactly. Knock those genitals off. Apparently, there's a, there's a room somewhere in the Vatican that has a whole lot of. Uh, uh, little porcelain penises <laughs> from the statues. Maybe that's a rumor. There was a Simpsons episode about that uh, where, um, yeah, well, there's a Simpsons episode about everything, but um, yeah, where I think they were, it was the one where Marge and all those other moms got upset about itchy and scratchy. Um, and so they were rebelling against it, but then uh, Michelangelo's David came to Springfield of all places and uh, the the other mothers of the group they wanted to destroy it um, because he's got a weenie but Marge <laughs> mm -hmm. he knew that was too far and um, that's how the episode ended I think or they ended uh, going to see David so right. anyway wow. that wasn't contributing anything much but Simpsons references and everything. So. <laughs> Simpsons educates the world. It's a very important, important thing. We should inform people of. Well, uh, let's wrap it up then. This has been the uh, Quackcast, Quackcast number five hundred and thirty-two with Ozan Ocean, Bands, Tants, and Pip. Goodbye. Ciao. Bye. 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 I will totally destroy Confederate statues if they're. But don't chop off their dicks. You could put a dick on them. <laughs> yes, uh, you can do anything but their dicks. We'll put them in the dick museum. Yeah, yeah. You could, you could, <laughs> you could strap a great big old dildo to them, and that would probably fix them. So maybe, maybe <laughs> do sexualize the statues. Okay. <laughs>